If you've been following the series, then you know for some time I've not been entirely sure what I was going to do with this area. But as you can see, I've put a quarry in here. Want to see how I built it? Sometime I've been unsure of what to do with this area. Now, a long time ago when I started the layout, I did an Instagram vote of whether it should be an unloading or a loading area. And I think it was about 57% said loading. Um, so this machine has sat here for some time to represent the loading of this area. Although I hadn't really decided what was gonna be there. I've also been informed by my dad that this is the wrong type of machine for loading as it's just used to remove topsoil. So, that might need replacing, but it stays there for the moment. So, I haven't really had an idea of what to do until now. Uh, I thought maybe it could be an area for loading granite, or maybe there could be like a forest here where a lot of logging gets lifted up onto the tracks. But I stumbled across this Daypole Dockside Traversing Kit. Uh, I bought it a long time ago. I don't even know why I bought it. Um, I haven't modelled the Harbour Railway or intended to in a long time. So it was in my collection of kits. And I thought, I'm going to adapt this and make it an unloader. So it sits above here and it will drop some ballast or granite into the skip wagons and have a little, little sort of animatic feature. Bit more interest and then it gives the layout a little bit more to do because then you can chunk your trucks and pull them forward as you load each one up. So that's what I'm going to do. If it works that's another question but we'll see. Right then well the inspiration for doing this conversion into uh, sort of a hopper house really uh, was I found this fella um, conveyor belt. It's a bit battered. Uh, I bought it and I've never got it to work and I don't know if there's something wrong with the motor which I've now misplaced but I can't get the motor to go. I put a bit of power to it and it sort of clicks forward, clicks back and that's it. Um, but I thought this would be quite nice on there but it's a little bit big to fit in that area but it sort of inspired me well why not make something like that. So I think I will save this for the larger layout and I'll adapt this. I think I'm going to adapt the crane arm to be the conveyor belt up to the hopper house, which will be the cabin here. And then I'll just use the frame here as the uh, area to sit over the siding where the wagons can be loaded. So I'm now going to open this up, study the parts, come back to you, and I'll know how to bash this. Okay, I've taken all the parts out to uh, have a study just to work out how I'm going to do this. And you might notice that uh, there's only one of these. This seems to be a, uh, what I find a common problem with the Daypole kits is that you buy them and then they don't have all the parts. It's not the first time this has happened to me. Um, and what's more annoying is they say that you should return the kit to the seller. Um, and they will send it back to Depot and, you know, the seller will give you a new kit. But obviously, I can't remember when I bought this kit and couldn't find a receipt, even if I did. So, you know, I'm pretty much stuck like that. So it's probably fortunate that I do intend to make it something other than the dockside crane, because that would be quite annoying otherwise. But uh, at least they gave me two lots of acetate for some reason. So there we are. So looking at the kit, uh, I think it's sort of going to be a basic conversion. Here's the four main parts to make up the cab. And there's the roof there. So that will sort of be the cab on top of the hopper. We won't be using this base or this bit. So obviously that's to make the cranes. So I'm not going to have the cabin rotating. So it's literally going to be the cab. It's going to sit on top of these. So they'll be done up as the four sides put together. And then the stone will just shoot through. And then I'm going to use what parts I did get for the crane uh, jib 
uh, to make the conveyor belt so that the I'll represent the granites being loaded at the bottom and then run up the conveyor belt to the hopper house. So that's the plan. Uh, I think I'm going to start with the uh, hopper housing first because I need to work out if I can get a point motor in there to make it operational so that you can press a button, the point motor will slide a little uh, sort of lid and allow some stone to drop into a wagon. Uh, so we'll see if that will work. I immediately changed my mind and decided to cut the floor. Right then, as you can see, I've decided to keep this base um, and use it as part of the construction. Uh, and I have chopped off the gear. And you can see a couple of pencil marks here. So I've just worked out roughly whereabouts this is going to go. It's going to go about there, and I've done the track marks, obviously that's where I want to cut a hole to allow the uh, granite to fall through, and I also need to make sure there's enough clearance for the uh, longer based rolling stock to go into this siding. The idea being that a train arrives, it can park some wagons in here, load some wagons in here, then swap them round, take these ones out, load them in there, put the ones in there, etc. A bit of operational interest, if the points work. So that's the idea anyway, uh, so I've marked that out. I now need to cut the hole out of here, put in the point motor and then a plate here that can move back and allow the ballast to drop. And then I need to put a hopper on top for the ballast to sit in. And once I've done that, I can then put the walls up using what was the cabin and might need a little bit of adapting just to sort of make it a bit more suitable. But that's the idea of that. And that'll go around what I then built there. Once that's all built, I can add the, uh, well, I suppose the legs. They'll probably need adapting because I probably went about that high. So you can roll wagons underneath, but locos won't be allowed to go onto that siding. They'll just bash into it. Um, and then hopefully the legs will then reach the floor of the quarry. Once that's done, I will then do a conveyor into the hopper house. And hopefully that should finish the job. And I can just then do the scenic side of this and get on with that. Okay, uh, I've now built a trap door to allow the ballast to fall into the wagons below, and I'm gonna use this point motor for a simple open and close mechanism. You see, it moves freely. Um, I just, just made it up with some thick plastic card. Just cut it to size and I've just cut the parts out and then glued it down around. And then um, this hole in the bottom, just to allow the point motor to sit in there and allow it to move freely. So with that now in place, uh, I want to put the walls up and then I want to put a hold for some ballast in here and obviously I need to protect the motor to make sure that the ballast doesn't fall in there and probably just sort of something just to direct it into the right position so that it can fall to the wagons below. So I'm going to move on to that. Right, so I have now built a hopper box for the ballast to go in. And you can see in the bottom there's white there, that's the das clay and that's just to help the gravitational pull to get the ballast to fall into the hole. So that will sit over here, get the right way around. Uh, and I'm limited with the size of what I was using and the point motor, so I probably would have preferred a bigger box, but I think this is probably enough for a few skip wagons. And just roughly line it up there, it's not quite in place. But as you can see, now allows the ballast to fall out. So with that in place, I can now glue it all together. Okay, I've built the walls. Uh, I filled in the holes where the uh, the rollers or the spindles or whatever they are for the crane, because uh, obviously I don't need them. I've chopped off the holders on that side just so it sits flush to the hopper, uh, and then I've also filled in where the lamp should go here. And I'm going to leave it like that for now because I want to paint it and I need to paint the windows, and I don't want to have to paint the windows of the hopper behind because I'm just going to hit the hopper and that's I want that to stay black and I still need to put the acetate in behind for the glazing. So that's gonna stay like that for now. I'm now gonna do the legs. So these things were absolutely caked in flash. Um, I need to work out a height for them. So I've got one over here. Now, the idea is that the locos don't go under the hopper loader. So they just push the trucks underneath. So that's too tall at the moment. I want it about, probably about that height. Um, so just use the measurement of this uh, 
bit of insulation board, about 2.5 centimetres, to chop off the legs that are gonna go over here on this side. So that should lower it there. And then I have to build a base to support the leg on this side here. So that's what I'm gonna do now. But before I could do any cutting, the first job of course would be to clear all that flash off. And there was a hell of a lot of flash. Right, so I've cut the uh, legs down and we've come to a problem that I thought I might have. I'm not too worried. Because I'll just come up with an alternative. But you can see, to get this roughly in the middle, tip wagons are going to hit the side of the leg. So, I might just have to rethink what I'm going to do for a support here. Probably just cut that across the top and then just put some very thin legs along the side there. Not the end of the world, just is slightly disappointing. I wanted to keep them on there to make it a little bit bulkier, but I'll get round it, I'm sure. So here we are, I've now get it in shot, put the frame together with a couple of bit of plastic card struts to replace the legs that have been removed from the other side. And as we can see, there's plenty of room there now. So that's all sort of in place. And so now I need to work out what I'm going to put just down here where I've got the uh, hut to just to support the leg at the moment. Um, but otherwise, the case of putting the floor on, putting a chute on the bottom of the floor so that the uh, ballast can be directed uh, into the wagons. And that's the main structure done. So it's then just a case of concentrating down on the uh, quarry floor. And there goes the tipper wagon. Okay, so uh, as I've shown you, the crane is, well, as you can see here, it's currently just balanced on a P-Way hut and an upturned uh, coach. So it needs a support underneath the legs. So I've been building these. So these were originally the runners for the bottom of the crane. And what I've done is I've cut off the parts that would hold the wheels. So I've just chopped them off the bottom and a couple of them have turned, you know, 90 degrees and then glued these back to back so they make the right height for the crane, well, now the hopper house to sit on. Uh, and then I've put a bit of micro strip, two mil, just in there to make the uh, strengthening bars in between. So I've got two of them knocked up, and then I've got a couple more of these left over, and I'm gonna sandwich them between so that they can go basically like that. And that will be like a raised walkway for the hopper to sit on, and then obviously the workman can then climb up and get further up to the hopper house. So I'm just gonna glue this all together and then I need to make a platform for it. Okay, right, for the gravel to get into the hopper house, I'm gonna need a conveyor belt. Now I did consider using the crane parts, um, but unfortunately, as I showed you earlier, I only got one of these and two of these. And trying to use them to make the uh, conveyor belt wasn't practical, they weren't the right shape. Two of these would have been perfect, but there we go. However, I have built this with some card. Um, so it's just a simple box of two centimeters, one centimeter card, all glued together, nice little rectangle. And then I've just got these bits I've made to go in the end so there's a little hopper basket there, and then that will then fill into the hopper house. And then I've made another one to go in the bottom. And then that will hold it up the right angle, so it's upright. Um, obviously, it's not very scenically pleasing as a box, doesn't look quite right. So I've got some corrugated plastic sheet. And I've cut them into strips, and I'm going to curve them over the roof. Sort of make a roof, basically. Curve over there. I'm going to work my way up the conveyor belt so that the gravel is covered as it goes up. Um, and that way you can see that it's not just a bit of cardboard. Okay, so I cut the strips as I showed you, and my intention was to curve them and glue them up the conveyor belt like so. Uh, but I am being having difficulty getting the first one to stick. Uh, I'm trying to do plastic to card, so that's obviously not going to help. Um, use the rocket glue. Uh, clamped it. It wasn't quite holding. I even tried heating with a lighter. A bit disastrous. And all it did was just melt the top there. Um, and then one side stayed in place and the other one pulled free. So 
I know that if I do this, eventually they are going to break free again, um, unless I can heat them and wrap them around. So, you know, I, I could possibly do that by finding something sort of the right size, uh, wooden dowel wise or something like that, immersing them in hot water, that could change the shape or I could try and use a heat gun if I had one, but I don't. So, uh, with that all considered, don't think my idea is gonna work on this occasion. I'm sure there are other models out there that could get it working, like I say, a heat gun or something like that would probably solve my problem. What I am going to do is, and I just spotted it in a model round exhibition I've been watching on YouTube, and um, someone had a conveyor belt, and theirs was square. So I'm gonna run these up here like that, and then I'm just gonna cut these down and go along the side, and it'll be a square covered conveyor belt. And then I'm just gonna put something on the bottom here to any water runoff will drain to either side, rather than go to the mechanism. So I think that is how I'm gonna go forward with this. So then uh, I've now covered three sides with the uh, corrugated uh, plastic sheet, um, plastic card, should I say. Um, and what I need to want to do now is use these crane parts as supports to essentially be holding the conveyor up in the air. So I'm going to use these and then I've got these parts which are for like the rollers which hold the ropes oh, on the back of the crane, you can see on there. I can't, I'm not familiar with the technical term of them, but they are just the right angle to fit on the bottom here. So they go like that, and then I'll put the, the piece of crane there, like that, so then it's held in the air. And I think that'll be looking all right. Okay, right. Um, I appreciate I have been showing much of the build whilst I've been doing it, but um, yeah, you get the idea. I'm just cutting bits and sticking it on. This is then the conveyor belt. It's all pretty much done. Uh, you can see I've threaded the wires through so they're going to go through to that point motor in the uh, hopper house and um, they come through to the bottom, which means that at the moment it won't stand up, as you can see, because uh, it's obviously sitting on the wires. But that is all pretty much done now. Um, the only bit I haven't done is the bottom because I'm not quite sure how I'm going to model that because that should be where obviously the uh, gravel is going to fall in there. So there should be some sort of slope or something or something to stop the gravel piling that way. But I'll probably do that once it's installed on the layout. Just for my... So this just really needs paint and weathering, as does the hopper house. Um, but with that, I'll come over here. Um, I, uh, obviously, you've got the ribs on the outside, and then you look at the inside, they haven't got that. So I think I'm going to put the ribs on the inside of the legs there. I'm going to put some railings on, and I'm going to add some ladders. Uh, and then... I think I'm pretty much ready to go for painting. The ribs were made by using some thin 1mm micro strip, cut to size and then glued in place. Once the ribs were done, I added the ladders. I had a leftover ladder from a day pole water crane and used that on one side, and the ladder on the other side is a ratio signal ladder. The handrails are made from an old window frame from my spare parts box. No idea, but I think it may have been a Fala kit. Here we are then, I've now added the fence and the ladders around the hopper house and we've got a ladder that goes down to the stand on the ground and I've added a little bit of railing and another ladder so you can get right to the quarry floor. Um, just put a bit of railing this side, you know, the company's quite cheap, you know, health and safety is a top priority. There's a little bit of railing on the corner there but nothing really here, So, uh, but you can hold on to this so you should be all right. Well, that's my theory anyway, I've just run out of plastic. Um, but otherwise, that's done, ready to go. The uh, conveyor belt's done and ready to go, so it's time to paint it. Okay, so first job was to prime everything um, and to make sure that the point motor wasn't caked in paint. I've just 
cover the top layer here with some masking tape. And then I've uh, done the conveyor belt as well. And the conveyor belt's a bit patchy because um, it's a little bit rainy outside and there was a little lull in the rain and I managed to do most of it and then it started heavy coming down again. But that should be enough for me to be able to paint it anyway. So time to crack the paints out. Right then, I'm gonna start with the uh, hopper house or the cabin, whatever you wanna call it first. Um, now it's a wood texture on the outside, so I'm gonna do it with a sort of weathered wood, wood effect. You know, uh, I might do the paint peel effect, I'm not sure, but definitely weathered wood for underneath and then nice rusty tin roof to on top. So that's where I'm gonna start. I've got from the Life Color range, the cold wood weathering sets with dark wood, wood base, and the light wood. And then from the other range of uh, weathered wood, uh, peeled deck. So I think those four should do it nicely. So let's begin with that. Okay, that is the Hopper House all uh, weathered wood. I'm going to have to go back over to the frames and the doors and the vents, but that's the base coat all on for it. Um, next is the roof. Uh, I'm going to do that with a mix of Revell's um, Rust and Reddish Brown, and then I've got some MIG Medium Rust and Rust Tracks. Now, uh, I don't know if anyone else has this problem, but I always find with these paints, quite a few of them, they tend to print the label on of what it is, and it rubs off after a while, and you can't really tell what it is. So, uh, they always recommend just getting a bit of masking tape or something fun, just write with a bit of biro what your paint is, because eventually it will rub off like that. You can barely tell what that says. Um, and it's quite annoying. Uh, and uh, life color, they, they tend to have a problem the same. But what I've done here, as you can see, I've just got a white paint pen and I've written the color on the lid, which obviously makes it a lot easier when you look in the drawer to find what you're after. So that's just a little tip there. Anyway, I'll get on with the roof. Okay, that's the roof painted. I did try and time lapse it, but uh, I didn't press the record button. But you get the gist of how I paint things. It's usually a blend of four colours, and I just, you know, while they're wet, just mix them in and just various tones of blending. And that's the roof. Okay, right. Well, I've now gone and painted the entire model uh, with the blends of browns and oranges and reds to make this sort of rust colour. Uh, I quite like it like this but probably is a bit too rusty. Um, but I'm just gonna leave it overnight, I'm gonna think about it and see if I'm gonna keep it like this or if I'm gonna put a, sort of a top coat over it of a peeling, sort of old worn out paint. Uh, but I think it looks pretty good otherwise. I'm quite happy with that sort of, how it's turned out. But as I say, I'm gonna have a little think about it and then uh, come back and decide what I'm gonna do. Right, I thought about it and I am going to put a top coat over the rust and sort of have rust patches all coming through, peeling paint, etc. So I'm going to do this with Marsco, uh, a bit of the hairspray weathering technique that I've seen and probably some of that um, paint chipping effects uh, stuff that I like to use as well. But I can't find that right now. <laughs> Right then, I've gone around and I've peeled all that mask off to reveal the rust underneath the paint. It's not quite come out how I wanted it to. It looks very um, sort of aeroplane camouflage at the moment. Um, now I tried the uh, hairspray method for weathering. I originally done it on the bottom here. Um, and what I'd done was I obviously put the rust coat on and then sprayed it with hairspray, put the green on top and then wet it and thought that would remove the paint. But it doesn't quite work like that. You need to put a layer of varnish in between. So this didn't work at all. So I've gone back over this with a load of um, weathering washes. I think it's come out all right. This is currently a bit too stark and a bit too bold. I see a bit of mask or still needs to come off there. Clean 
now. Um, but I did try the hairspray method on this again, and uh, it, I think because the mask oil didn't really work on most areas. The one area it did is where I forgot to put mask oil. Then I'll just lift the whole thing up, try and show you underneath. Not very successful at all. I should return in a second. So I'll try that again without trying to hold the camera in one hand and remove it in the other. So you can see these edges all had the mask off and I just peeled it off. It's got that peeled paint. And then this side, where I forgot to put mask on, but I did do the varnish followed by the hairspray followed by the top coat. And then I've just rubbed it over with a, um, not quite a, a sort of plastic brush. And that's more the desired effect I was after. Um, it's a bit unfortunate to realize that now. But never mind, I'm not going to go back and paint the whole thing again. It's taken ages to do this. I think I'm just going to do the same as what I've done here. I'm going to get some washes out and I'm going to just sort of um, blend that quite stark paint colour and rust so it's a more of a natural look. Here we are then. I've gone over the model with some washes, various rust colours, neutral grey, and then I've just added a bit of uh, rust and brown earth weathering powders and then sealed that in with varnish, which on the camera looks horrendous. So I see this, see that spattered effect there. It's not that bad in real life, honest. Um, but yeah, definitely a lot more subtle in its colour and tone now than it was before. That sort of stark, very uh, uh, World War II aircraft camouflage look that it was having. Um, so now it's a case I've got to wire the point motor up to the wires that are in the conveyor belt. Um, but before I do that, because that means it then all has to be put into place, I need to work on this back bit here. So obviously this just painted foam is not really going to do for that area. So I'm going to get some corrugated sheet and probably some lolly sticks. And I'm just going to make it look like that they have just reinforced a wall there just to stop that falling down for when the wagons come on there. And then another reason why a locomotive is not allowed on that siding. Right then, I've cut some southeastern fine cast corrugated sheet into size. And then, as I said, I've got some lollipop sticks. I've weathered them to look like worn wood and I'm going to place them along each sheet and then put that along this back wall here. Um, so these are a little grey at the moment. I think I'm going to try the um, hairspray weathering technique again. So I'm going to rust these all up, put a top coat on, well, no, rust them up, should I say, then put a layer of varnish on, then a layer of hairspray, then a layer of top coat, and then once you wipe the top coat, you can then chip away the paint and reveal the rust underneath. So I'm going to give this another go and see how it comes out. Right then, uh, I've changed my mind again. I was going to paint over the top and, you know, as I said, do the weathering effect with the hairspray, but um, I'm quite pleased how they look rusted. Oh, I think that looks all right. And, and I achieved that by using a mix of rail matches, dark and light rust, and then life colours weathered black and using the life colour tractor as the base coat. Um, so I put the base coat on and then I just blobbed the other three colours on, got a sponge and then have just dabbed around blending the colours. And I think that's come out really well. I think it looks really effective. Um, so I decided, you know what, I'm not going to paint it because why would a quarry, you know, buy this just for the purpose of holding up this uh, earth bank here, as we say, um, stop it falling down. There's no reason why they want to paint it if they're too busy with other things, digging up gravel etc um it's a wasted expense um so i'm just going to now glue these down put the painted lolly pop sticks in front and i think that should be quite effective once complete Once this scenery is in place, the next job would to be soldering the wires, the point motor to the wires in the conveyor belt. Then that would allow me to put all the model onto the layout and secure it in place. Right then, you see I've now wired up the uh, motor and if I show you, moment of truth, there you are. And 
and that's the trap door working to allow the ballast to fall out. Obviously you have to be pretty quick with the buttons because the wagons are very small and I think that will probably pour out very quick, but it works and that's the important thing. So here we are, the conveyor belt is now in place. Uh, I've had to make a few adjustments just to get things all together. So there's a little chop in the roof of the conveyor belt just so I can get this roof on. You can see it wasn't very easy to cut. I tried doing it with a knife, so that wasn't working. So I've just butchered that with a pair of snips, but when that's on, you don't really notice. Um, the railing had to be slightly adjusted to allow for the conveyor belt to sit over the top. Um, but I was always thought, well, that'd probably be the case anyway, because you can have to duck to get under there to get round there. So that ladder on the back really is just for maintenance. If you need to get up and uh, inspect the conveyor belt. Um, all glued in, I've, put, I've drilled into the board now, as you can see. Um, so the bottom, I've been wondering how to do, do this and how to model it. Because obviously, you know, you want to feed the uh, stones or granite or whatever into the conveyor belt. And the way it's sort of set up at the moment is you, you don't have to top load into there. But I did notice on the layout uh, Gravity Oak that I saw at the N-Gage show the other day. Um, he had a conveyor belt and the conveyor belt went into the ground. And then there was like some bars where obviously the bulldozer just pushed the, gra the granite or whatever, the stone, into the ground. And then it just dropped onto the conveyor belt and the conveyor belt took it up. So I think I am going to model a similar representation. Obviously we are getting quite close to water level, but it is still just slightly higher than the river. The river's at that level, the ground's at that level. So we've still got a bit of play to avoid the you know, conveyor belt flooding. So that's how I'm gonna model that. Uh, I've also replaced this uh, lollipop stick here because the one I cut was too short and I thought I'd put it on there and just sort of be a case of ah, they, they got it wrong, but Ah, oh, I thought it just looked a bit odd, so I've just done another one. Uh, and then it's just doing the ground cover and sorting out this little area here. But otherwise, I think that's looking all right. All right then, I've uh, made this little area here to sort of have the grate where the stones fall through. So I've just basically painted black underneath and then I've got a bit of card and then took what is from my scrap box, I don't know if it's a window frame or maybe a bit of railing or something, um, but that's for the bars. And then I'll just use some of this um, corrugated flooring sheet to go over the top there. And I'm gonna glue that in place. I've painted it sort of the color, same colors to match here. Uh, I'm gonna put a bit of cor um, corrugated sheet here. So obviously, so you don't want the stones falling that way. Uh, and I'm just gonna glue everything in place and then Put some uh, sort of probably tarmac scatter or something on the floor here. Don't think it needs to be too bumpy, so if it's dug out, it's you know mechanically leveled, and then just a pile of stone here, and that'll probably do the scene. Um, I'm going to kick this hut here. I don't know what happened to the door, but you can't really see it where it is, so it's not too bad. And then I just need to replace the broken chimney as well. Here we are, then I have now done the quarry floor with a mixture of grey and earth scatters just sort of blended together and then I put a bit of uh, more corrugated sheet here a couple more cut up lollipop sticks for the supports stopping the stones falling back and then three three giant slugs here are just um, sort of some dash clay that was going off so I've tried to mould it into a sort of mound shapes I painted them up um, and once they're dry, I'll glue them in position as, as they are. And then I will put this whole area covered in ballast to represent the granite that's going into the pit here. Well, here we are then. Uh, I've now done the ballast pile for the quarry. Uh, the only bit I'm not quite happy about is this little lip here that's appeared, where uh, it's obviously a bit rounded with the dash clay. It's not so obvious on the camera, but I'm just going to have to wait for that glue to dry, put some more ballast in and just keep gluing it in small layers until that disappears. Uh, obviously I've got the pile, so it looks like it's all falling into the grate, which then take it up for the conveyor belt and it can be dropped into the wagons. Around the uh, other area, I've added some uh, shrubs and bushes and a little bit of turf to represent weeds. So you can see that around there. It just gives it a little bit more life and a bit more color because it's very rust around here. However, 
that's pretty much done and uh, I'm quite happy with that. Um, I've just got this little patch here with Prince's. That little bit of scenery needs doing. I've got a point lever to go in here. And probably have one video left, really. I mean, there's other stuff I, I can still need to do. I want to repaint the rolling stock and that. But layout wise, I think I've just got a bit of snagging to do. And then this layout is complete. Now, obviously there's one more thing I need to do that you're probably waiting to see. Does the hopper actually load? So, I can't remember which way around the wires are. Bear with me. But I do believe if I do this, that's to shut it. That's to open it. And the ballast is stuck. <laughs> There we go. Uh oh. <laughs> it does work. Just needs a little fine tuning. Right then, while that experiment uh, showed uh, a few teething troubles, it has actually opened up the opportunity for a little bit more um, scenic work. Because as you can see, there would probably be spillage uh, under here. So where that is naturally fallen and over piled in the, uh, the hopper wagon, I am going to glue all these bits of ballast down just to add to the scenic treatment, just to add to a bit more realism, really. Every cloud, every cloud. And this is the final product with that last little bit of ballast glued in place. I'm so pleased with this because it's come out a lot better than I ever thought it would. Um, I'm really proud of this bit of modelling. And I hope you've enjoyed watching me build it too. Well, that's this episode for now. Uh, I am really pleased with how this has come out. Uh, as I say, there's a bit of teething troubles with getting this to work properly. So I probably just need to look in that a little bit more. But as I say, this is the layout pretty much complete now. I need to go over and do a bit of snagging. Uh, definitely needs to be populated with a few more people. As uh, the only people we've got are in the vehicles at the moment. Uh, the sheep are dead, so they need gluing back in place. Uh, I need to like put a bit of brick underneath this chimney here. And a few other bits that need doing. So, probably one more episode left. I do have other things I want to do, uh, and I'll probably do that in the future. I want to repaint some of the rolling stock to match my Jack Jones loco, to have a corporate livery for the line. But layout build wise, it's almost done. So hopefully, I'll see you for one more episode. Uh, if you have liked, then please click the like button. Uh, if you want to subscribe, then do subscribe. Because uh, once this is done, I've got other projects in the pipeline. Um, I live with a small person who's demanding his own layout. So that's probably going to be the next one. And hopefully, I'll see you sometime soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.